Okay, so let's get straight into it. After you transfer the measurements the way I've shown you in lesson one, you need to decide which cap to use. For this DIY wig making, we are making wigs on the mesh dome cap. Q-Fit is a very good brand. Also, I sell Japanese swim caps, and I'll save that for another YouTube video um, telling you the differences and when I use them. But for the sake of this video, this is a good brand. If your client is or yourself is a 23 and up, you want to use an extra large wig cap. If they are 22 and a half and below, you use the standard wig cap. Now, there are times when I use a standard wig cap for someone that's a 23, and that's because their front to nape and temple to temple are what I call shorter measurements. So if you have any questions about measurements or which cap to use, feel free to drop your measurements down below or to ask any questions. So I'm using an extra large because I am a 23 and a half and I'm making a wig for myself and this is a 23 and a half wig block. When you look at the wig cap for the Q-Fit brand, one side is going to look like this, it's starting to connect and the other side is going to be square. This is the back side. So we're gonna take the front of this cap and just put it on the wig block. So symmetry matters. Once you take it out, you just put it on the wig block, trying to keep this in the middle. And I'm just going to bring my cap down to my pen. I like to pin my front first. I'm gonna take my T-pen, put it here in the middle. Take this T-pen, drag the cap into the measurement. So this is my temple to temple measurement. It is starting to show my hairline, as you can see. If you have a shorter temple to temple, because from lesson one, if you remember, I am a 19. Let's say if you were a 16 temple to temple, these T pins will be farther back, probably about right here. Turn it around and then you want to pin the back. When you pull the back of your cap down, look at these two lines. Try to put it as even as possible. So when I say that, I mean from the middle of my block to this line, I am trying to have about the same amount of space. Not you putting the cap on and it's over here like that. Once you've done that, you take your T-pin and you just pin it. This measurement is important. It is the nape that we transfer. Take your T-pin, drag it directly up and bring it back into that measurement. Push down and lock your T-pin in. Push down and lock your T-pin in. Now, when you try this, my nape is very long, a 15. If your nape is a 13, you would be right here. So instead of pinning your cap here, you would pin at the measurements that you transferred, like in lesson one. And I'm gonna tell you, if you have a 13 front to nape measurement, with a larger head, there is going to be room that you need to remove out of this cap. So instead of it being flush, you're going to have extra cap. Certain measurements, it isn't going to always be flush. When it's like that, you need to remove the extra space. And I'll link that video down below on how to remove the extra space. And after you pin your cap, this is what it should look like. And again, this is for my exact measurements. Yours will look a certain way depending on your measurements. The next step is to pin your closure. When it's time to pin your closure, and this is from my vendor number 28, Vietnamese bone straight hair. So regardless of what size close, closure you are using, I always follow this step and that's folding it in half. So to fold it in half, I line it and this crease, this fold is what I want to pay attention to right here. So I'm gonna take my little pen and I am going to pin it straight through so that I know where the halfway mark is. 
And you can mark this as well, too. For the sake of the video, I might just mark it. But you can mark it. And you are going to use this line as, as a guide. And you don't want to take your pen necessarily and pin it right underneath the cap. Why? Because the hairline is back here. And I do not like to have my pen right next to my hairline. If you are new making wigs, please take this tip. If you are using T-pens, which I do use T-pens, do not take your T-pen and put it so close to this hairline because sometimes the lace get caught up in the T-pen and it'll rip. So if the lace is going to rip, we want it to rip somewhere right up in this area. Tension is so important when you are um, attaching your lace closure to your wig cap. So I'm going to bring it down again, stand on this dotted line, and I'm going to just pin it in. You do not need this pin, so I'll always move this pin. Because my measurements are coming in like this, I'm going to leave these pins here for right now, but I do not leave these pins here whenever I am pinning my actual lace closure down, and I'll show you. So now look at the hairline. You want the hairline to be below the cap right here. This is a good amount of space right here so if i'm looking i have about a t-pin length just this part of the t-pin is a good amount of space if you need a guide of how much your hairline should be below the cap now my measurements are challenging because i have a longer temple to temple you are going to need several more pin t-pins when you are doing this so be prepared and now that I have it here, I am going to remove these T-pins. And as you can see, the cap shifted a little bit, but I'm not really concerned about that. Just a tiny bit. It doesn't make a difference when you're making custom wigs. When I apply it, it's still going to be where I need it to be for my temple to temple area. So once you have it here, you have tension. What I like to do is take another T-pin and apply it right here without pushing it all the way in. I am pressing, I am pulling this back gently without ripping it and pulling too much. But at the same time, I'm putting enough tension and I'm going to pull outward. When I pull outward, I take this T-pin and I stretch it to pin right here. And that is where I want my placement. So if you can see, you always want to leave a little bit of hair off the side of the cap on your lace closure. Then if you want to, to keep it, from shifting, you could take your T-pin and place it. You do not have to put all of these T-pins in here, but this is a very beginner-friendly way of doing it because we do not want this lace closure to shift. And you see, I the key is I'm keeping tension. I'm applying pressure with this hand and I'm pulling out. So you have to have a way to gain control over your lace closure. Doing this step, it helps. So because I'm pulling it, you see how it's starting to rip? This lace is very thin, so I'm pulling it, and I am barely putting it in, and I'm going to come back and put a T-pin here. Now, it's no right or wrong. If you wanted to, you can take another T-pin and put it here if you feel like you need it. I'm very heavy-handed. Now, once you've done that, you see how I release the tension is coming down, but that's fine because when we pin the back, it's going to go back where I want my lace closure to be. And if you do what I told you by trying to find the middle of the closure, it's always going to be even. Even if it doesn't look visually um, even, just trust the process. If, it's, if it looks too uneven, and then go back and check to make sure that you are in the middle. Now, once you have it like that, I am going to turn it around so that you can see. So you want to use a clip to keep the hair out of the way. I'm not worried about the front because it's pinned without shifting. An easy way to do this is to pull back. So I am finding the corners of my lace closure. If you look here, here are the corners. You are going to need two pin, two T-pins this I like to find the corners and pull directly back ensuring that each side is going to be flush 
You can use a duck clip. Keep it out of the way. So here's one way of doing it. You can most definitely take this pen, pin it here, come here, and pin it here. Ensuring it's enough tension, take another T pen and put it in the middle, okay? Now, this would be flush enough for us to sew it out. What I like to do is, after I've identified my corners, I place a T pen in, I place another T pen, corners over here and I pick them up and with even tension I pull back put my T pins in my block and when you do that you want to make sure that you can lock it in and I lock it in and as you can see it's flat it's flush on this side it's flush on this side and I am going to turn it around so that you can see that it's flush on this side as well so once you have your closure pinned down, you want to hand sew or hand stitch the closure onto the wig cap. But before you do that, you need this hair out of your way, whether you put it in the ball, corn roll it down, put it in the plaid. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to ball it up. That knot didn't go too well. Use a clip and clip it out of my way. If you need to, you can have your duck clip. So if I'm sewing on this side, I can pin here. If I need to, I can pin it in the back. I'm gonna just put this pin here. And when you get ready to sew, you want to start at the very tip and you can sew all the way around once you have it pinned with enough tension. Now, sometimes if you're just only using the ball pins to pin this down, it doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't give enough tension sometimes when you're pinning it down. Certain closures do, certain closures don't. Another way to sew your closure, which I do do a lot as well, is to start from the middle here and you're gonna sew this way, and then you're gonna come here, start from the middle, and then sew this way. So no right or wrong, it's a preference. Before, when we started making wigs, and like when we were putting closures, sewing closures as a sew-in, you always wanted to start from the middle because you wanted that tension to pull out, to pull on both sides. But it's whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong. When I teach, I like to teach different techniques. Now, this is a needle and this is thread. I already have this pre-threaded, but if you do not know how to thread your needle, I will show you. I have a needle here and thread. You can find this at your local beauty supply store. You want to take your thread and put it through the eye of the needle, this little hole. I like to have, when you are threading, you don't want it too short. One way is like arm length because you don't want to run out of thread and go back in if you're gonna start from one end and go all the way around. If you are starting from the middle, and coming this way and then coming from the middle and going the other way, your thread doesn't need to be as long and you are going to thread two needles. So we just cut this thread off. And when you get to the end, you are going to tie a knot. There are many different ways to tie a knot. For the sake of this closure, one works. You can come here and tie it like a regular knot. I do tend to take my needle and tie it that way. But for this video, I'm going to show you. You just put a little knot and that's it. So now that we have our needle threaded, 
we are going to sow. When you are sowing, it does not matter if you sow up or if you sow down. So this is sewing up. Keep control of your thread so it doesn't tangle or knot up. If it does, try to untangle it. If it cannot untangle, you want to knot it off and then re-thread another needle and then keep going. Re-thread the same needle. So I'm sewing up and I'm pulling with enough tension. Now, if you notice how I am sewing, if you look right here, what I am doing is sewing on this part of the closure right here. And I am sewing in the middle right here. If your closure doesn't look like this right here, and it's let's say it just has it just plain lace so it doesn't have that extra fold right here. You want to sew the way I'm sewing still. Now, a one way is to sew down. If you sew down, then you are going like this. And as you can see, when you sew down, and I am going through the actual rubber band here. When you sew down, you can see your thread right here. When I sew a closure on, again, it's not right or wrong to sew up or down. However, I like to sew down because when I'm sewing down, I have more room to continue to pull the closure outward and create more tension. When I start off, I always start up just so that that knot cannot be on top of the closure. Another thing you need to know when you're sewing your closure is spacing. Do you see how much spacing I have in this stitch to this stitch? So you do not need them super close and you do not want them too gappy. So I'm not going to be right here and then come all the way over here to start my next stitch. And I'm not going to start my next stitch right here super close. So let me put a few stitches in so that you can see. So this is a good amount of space. And when I take the T-pin, it's a little less than this T-pin. And if you sew really well, the more you do, even if you had a T-pin space, it would be okay. But I always sew like this right here. Now, another step that I'm doing when I'm sewing. If you watch, when I sew, this is my thread. I am sewing down. I am looping my thread as I sew. So it's natural for me. So let's say if I was to just put the thread in and pull right i'm gonna do that again so you can see i'm gonna put the th needle in and i'm not going to loop it so i'm not taking the thread and making sure my needle is coming through the loop so the thread is on this side of the needle and i'm just pulling it out i do not like to sew my lace closures on like this if you do it you can still make a good wig but I highly advise you to go over it with your sewing machine. Regardless, I'm going to go over it with my sewing machine. But you see how it looks right here? It doesn't look as clean as this right here. So try your best to sew and loop. To create that extra security in your stitch. So for me, the way I'm holding my thread already allows, and again, it's tension here, me to just pull it and create the loop. The more you do this, the better you become. Again, anything that you need help with, I do not mind doing virtual classes. 
just feel free to send me an email and I'll let you know how you can book without having to take a full class. And then you just continue to sew all the way around. I sew around that T-pin without moving it. So you see, I'm taking the thread under the T-pin. And as I go, I'm not going on top, I'm going under the T-pin. And then I am going to sew. Again, trying to stay right here on the lace closure. And that's it. So we just keep sewing the same way. And again, let me show you that as I'm sewing, I wouldn't just keep going. I'm making sure I loop my thread. Another thing, sometimes we pin down the closures and you find yourself keep going through the wig block. If you are going through the wig block like this, a way to avoid that is to gently, as you are putting your needle in the lace closure and wig cap, pull up a little bit because it's going to take the cap off of the wig block and help prevent you from sewing into the wig block. And if you do sew into the wig block when you get ready to remove your wig cap, you will know it's fine. Just cut it off. You see how I lost control here? And it almost tangled up or created a knot. So I'm gonna just keep sewing. When I get here, I might need to turn this T-pin this way. So again, I'm at another T-pin. I am going to sew around it. I can't get it to go under by moving. So I lift the T-pin up a little bit and I keep sewing. And you are going to follow this technique all the way around. Once you get to the end, right? I come up and I knot it off. So I come through the lace closure and I create a knot, one knot and that's it. And I tighten it down. And as you can see, my lace closure is still hanging off and that's it. It really doesn't matter when you do it, but make sure you cut it off. And as you can see, as I remove my T-pins, release some tension, and my closure is still in place. Now, the next step is to draw your guidelines.